Hello. My name is Gil Carlson. I'm Director of Technical Services for ITT Fluid Handling Division. And we will be discussing in a series of segmentational series, uh, cooling, tower, pumping, and application. The first thing that we will consider will be the uh, interrelationship between pump selection and the downcomer return piping, which has been a great problem in many cases for engineers, causing a good deal of embarrassment because the cooling tower pumping arrangement simply does not work unless the downcomer return piping is taken into account. So let's consider, first of all, the generalized consideration for pumping for the cooling tower as this differs from the closed loop piping system. In the closed loop piping system, we have what is termed an up goer pipe. and a downcomer pipe. Now, it will be noted that these are uh, very scientific terms, but in the closed loop system, the fact of losing pressure ahead as water is driven up the supply riser the energy head is recovered as water comes down the downcomer pipe. In the closed loop system, there is no consideration of the static height involved, and all that we are concerned with is the friction loss in the piping system. Now, for the open type of piping system, where we are pumping from one water level to another, we must take into account not only the friction loss as from A through the piping system and to D, but we must include the static height difference between the low water level and the high water level. So for the conventional open type of system then, the pump head is equal to the friction loss in the piping system itself plus the open static of the system. The cooling tower system differs slightly from the conventional type of uh, open uh, piping system in that we have a Duncomer return pipe. Now, Providing that we do establish a siphon return in the downcomer return pipe, we have basically the same situation as with the conventional type of open system in that our pump head is going to equal to the friction loss in the piping system as from A through the piping system, the condenser, the valves, the check valve, should always be applied at the discharge of the tower pump going back through the piping system and to E. Plus, in this circumstance, the open part of the uh, tower system, which is the difference in elevation as from discharge of the downcomer return pipe to the water level in the, uh, in the water pan itself. So we have then H sub O. And this is the generalized consideration for pump selection, but is based on a full pipe drawing a siphon return as from E to D. Now, 
So long as the downcomer return pipe is reasonably short in length, we will and can establish that siphon return. On the other hand, it must be remembered that the pressure available at the discharge of the conventional piping system has zero atmospheric pressure. And the static height H sub R will, because the, of the fact that this is above the discharge point, will be operating at a pressure which is less than atmospheric. Now, should a vent point occur at D as caused by loose piping or by purposeful arrangement by placing a vent at this point, we will not establish the siphon draw. And because we have not established that siphon draw, we cannot cancel that part of the piping system in terms of the pump selection. And the pump head in this circumstance must become the total height of the uh, piping system above the water level in this circumstance, H sub S as being from the water pan level to the top of the piping system. In some circumstances, and it must be remembered, that before we do establish a full flow, and given the consideration that we are working with the application of a siphon draw, we must establish this piping as full before the siphon draw occurs and before the pump can operate at full flow. If the piping is oversized, and because of its oversized nature, we establish that we cannot fill that return piping, we can have air entering into the bottom of the pipe itself and canceling out the siphon draw. If we design this properly so that we have a velocity of at least one foot per second, or a head loss of at least one foot per hundred foot in terms of design, we can generally establish that siphon draw. But in some circumstances, it may take time. And it's amazing to watch a system such as this when the pump starts. And with that pump startup, until such a time as the siphon draw occurs, we have a very low flow rate in the condenser piping system. Deep discussion of this problem in our design manual entitled Cooling Tower Piping and Pumping Practice and covers the situation in more detail than is outlined here. But conceptually again, when the cooling tower piping system is designed, consideration must be given to that downcomer return piping. 